Hi, this is an ambitious tutorial. I'm going to try to show you how uh, I go about making a vectorized version from a photograph uh, to do a self-portrait or a portrait of anybody else that you want. And I'm going to try to break this down into the very basic steps. I don't think you need to be an artist. It helps to be an artist, but you can learn the technique and put this together pretty much for yourself. So let's give this a try and see how we do. Uh, this is a piece that I started working on and I'm going to trash these layers and start again for the sake of this tutorial. It all begins with a reference layer and that is get yourself a picture of you with some nice light and dark tones to it and the better quality of the picture the more detail you can build into it. And once you get that reference layer in I just import the picture uh, using an import to stage is usually the way to do it then lock that layer down so that you can't disturb it later. And I'm going to start building layers on top of this and the first layer I'm going to build is going to be what's called just the face layer. And with the face layer, I'm going to do this very quickly. I might wind up trying to speed up the, the camera later so it doesn't take quite so long. But let's see, give this a try and see what we can do. The face layer, I'm going to start behind the hairline and I'm going to do my very best to try to create the face. The tool I'm using to do this is the pen tool. If you don't know how to use your pen tool, you want to learn. I'm using Flash to do this. If you want to use Adobe Illustrator, that's just fine too. If you want to try doing this with Inkscape, that's fantastic too. But any of those tools will use a pen tool or a vector illustrator, and that's what this is all about. Now I'm using some tricks. If you happen to be using Flash, one of the best tricks that I've learned is to hold down the space bar, space bar when I want to move and slide this thing along. The space bar temporarily turns this into a move tool and that makes it pretty easy to get around. And you'll also notice I carved out the face there and I don't care, whoops, undo that, control Z. Uh, I don't care that it's not quite uh, being detailed around the hairline here. I want to draw the face underneath a hair layer that's going to go on there later, so I'm just going to start with this. Next I'm going to take a sample of color with this and the sample eyedropper tool will work great on this layer but only so long as I unlock it first. I'm going to unlock the reference so I can actually get that flesh tone. And now that it's there, I'll go back to this layer and fill in the flesh tones that I want. And I'm going to lock that reference layer again. The next big trick to this, I'm going to turn off the fill in the face layer. That's that little cube thing there. And my next step is to draw a line that divides the light side of a face from the dark side of a face. I'm going for very simple colors here. And two tones in the face that we can enhance later on tends to be enough. I'm going back to my pen tool and I'm going to choose some arbitrary point up here on the line to start with. I just clicked on the line to make a new anchor point and now I'm going to say okay looks like if I were doing this I'm going to try to create an area of shadow and light that generally reflects where I observe that shadow and light taking place. And I can sort of see it here, and I can sort of see it here I can see there's lots more going on than, than I'm doing justice here for. I'm going to have to do a lot more work on it later. But it's generally speaking going like this. And this starts to create some good contours to the face. Now I've got more unusual shadow and light going on down there, but I think I've just about got it. And I think I've divided it all the way across. So now if I turn on the fill again, I can just take this color here Go to, the, go to the color palette and I'm just going to deepen that tone to give it the shade in the same hue as everything I've done so far. So there's the division that I made, there's where it's going. Now I can add a lot more detail while I'm doing this. I'll echo that hue over here for the nose. It's like a little island of dark. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to try to go fairly quickly around this, but try to be accurate. And this will help to sculpt out that nose what it looks like. I'm going to ignore the nostril from now and again I'm just trying to figure out where the light and the dark goes. If I make a mistake like this and I really want to extend this, I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to come back and finish that off later. I can go and enhance and change these things later on very easily. I'm getting a little stylish with this. Well, that's kind of doing the job. And I'll turn on the fill again and while I still have that tone there, use the paint bucket and fill it up. Getting the idea? Uh, I can see something around the eye. Do the same thing.
I don't know what these parts of the eyes are called, but they're pretty funky. And really? I wonder if I can fill it without seeing the fill. Oh yeah, you can. That's handy. So I can just go and click these things and trust they're going to get filled there right. So light and dark halves of the moon, pretty much. Uh, I'm going to... I could keep on going with this, but this is just meant to be the face layer, and maybe I'll put more enhancements on later layers. So stepping back and seeing what we've got so far does not look too terribly convincing, but the next layer is going to make a difference. Now before we leave this, maybe we should get rid of this stroke that's all the way around the outside. I'm using a nice bright blue for the stroke and then coloring in with more realistic tones. Frankly, the strokes do, a, do nothing for us. So I'm going to open up the properties on this, put her over there. And I'm going to get rid of the stroke really quickly with this. If I simply click on the entire face layer like this, use the select tool and click on like a fill, I can get rid of the stroke completely under properties by clicking on the stroke sample and saying turn off the stroke. Now all I have is the fill and I'm going to propose this is a huge solution to this thing. Don't draw with strokes and lines, draw with fill and you're going to get much more believable stuff. So next I'm going to add a hair layer to this thing. I know we're adding detail basically from the, the, the back parts of the face and adding things on top of it by stacking these things up and it gives us great control. I'll turn off the face layer back to the reference and I'll use it and it doesn't matter you can choose a color now or later but I'm just gonna go back to that tool again there's my pen tool and I'm gonna try to give myself a decent hairdo and again I'm gonna go kinda stylized in general with this you can be as precise as you want but it's kind of nice to go with something that's just stylized. And this is looking pretty goofy. I might have to come back and clean this up again later on. Yes, this is my face. This is what it looks like this year. I do one of these about every year or so. As I'm trying to teach my students. Now, this business of getting around the ears, uh, I may put more in there later. I'm using con uh, the space bar and the control key to zoom in. Temporarily it turns the tool into the proper zoom tool and I'm gonna see if I can get away with very few vectors around this ear. Yep, that's working okay. And remember this is the hair so I'm gonna kinda make it jaggy a little bit. Now this being the hair I've also got myself a graying beard so I'm gonna continue as though it's not so graying and I'm going to kind of stylize it a little bit and I'll add the gray later on. I'm going to choose to groom myself a little better and not show all the hair that I should have shaved off my neck before this. And I'm not going to get too detailed on this too because I will add highlights to it later. And there's a lot of guesswork going on in this now. You know what, undo that. I can kind of jagify this out a little bit here like this. Okay, get the idea. Closed all off. Uh, there's more that I can I can do to this. I guess I can add some more lines to separate so that I don't completely obscure everything that's going on here. Now I'm doing sharp points around here where normally I'd be tossing some curves into play. But it's, uh, but it's fur, so it's kind of jaggy like that. Okay, um, while I'm there, why not toss a few eyebrows in? What the heck? Eyebrows are going to be much more stylized. Got to use a little imagination for where this is going, but whoops, undo. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I did not pluck my eyebrows. So yeah, they're looking pretty rough. Okay, so I got myself, there's a bunch of uh, hair. I might as well put in some eyelashes too while I'm at it. And the eyelashes again, this is going to be, oh uh, man, that's not good. This is going to be fill, ultimately. It's not going to be stroke. So it's going to thin out a lot. Oh, 
hopefully that's going to do the job. Just a little bit of light treatment there. You don't want to get too precise with the, the eyelashes. It's just an area of dark. Whoops. That's going to be sort of randomly around there. Alrighty. So now let's try filling this in. Looking, <laughs> It's looking like i got mascara on now. Let's see how bad it can look. Uh, so now I'm going to go and sample that color. I'll turn off the reference lock again. Eyedropper tool grab a color that I think is representative. It's sort of a dark brown and start filling in the details. So there, there, there. And to get in there, a little bit of eyebrow or a little bit of eyelash. Yes, the eyelashes are looking a little bit too pronounced, but I could probably mess, mess around with that a little bit. You can always use the subselect tool and try clicking on a point and tapping it with the, air, with the arrow tool to make it look a little less extreme. For instance, this is looking like it's a little bit too long an eyelash. So I'll trim it down a little bit, just like that. And the same thing, I'm going to grab that whole layer of hair, and I would sure like to get rid of the stroke around it, so I'll just turn the stroke off. And what we're left with is just fill. Now taking a step back, turning everything off, you get the idea of where this has managed to get to. There, face, and the hair starts to flesh it out, so you get that recognizability. We're going to keep on doing this and we're going to add more detail along these lines to get the um, the highlights and the darkness in there, but I'm just going to show you where this is going to get to. I want to cut this off. This is just meant to give you a start on it. If I open up a more fleshed out version of this, here are the layers that it started with. So we started with the reference layer, added a face to it, same way, added the hair to it, I then added hair highlights, just going and trying to recognize where there were little jaggy parts that were uh, lighter in color, and it starts to sculpt things out. Then the shadows, before and after, and it's the shadows that start to imply things like the nostril and the ear and ear structure. And then I added a few more highlights on there, and that starts to define like the tip of the nose, the end of the, the lip, uh, the cheek, all that sort of stuff. Now I'll get into an, the next tutorial and it'll show you how you do the eyes, but that should be enough to get you started. you got to have some faith and you got to be a really keen observer to see where these areas of dark and light are from the original picture. And it's tricky. By the time it's all done, you should get something that's going to be a nice stylized self-portrait. Okay, good luck. See you next tutorial for the eyes.